Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm sharing an update on the wear and tear of my Hermes Kelly. For those of you tuning in for the first time, hi, I'm Katie. I like to do these luxury fashion videos here on YouTube. I share hauls and reviews, but at the end of the day, I share my journey so we can all mindfully curate our own collections. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below with any questions you might have about the Hermes Kelly style. All of your support really means a lot to me. I've now actually had my Hermes Kelly for a year and I have thoroughly enjoyed using it. I felt like the one year mark is a good time to do like an updated review, also an update on the wear and tear. So that's what I'm going to be sharing today. To start off, I always like to share the specs of the handbag that I have. So this is my Kelly 25 Cellier Touch. It is in the touch style with Madame leather in the body and Nilo shiny croc in the sangles and the handle. The lock clochette is also in crocodile, but the Kelly strap is in Madame leather. It's in color noir, as you can see, which is black and with gold hardware. I think those are all of the specs that I need to go through to describe my bag. Oh, I purchased this in September of 2021 from the Waikiki Boutique in Hawaii. I did a whole video sharing how I managed to score this piece. I will link that up above in case you haven't seen that already, but I go through a lot more of like the story time and all of that um, in that video. But this is my Kelly 25. I have thoroughly enjoyed using this handbag throughout the past year. I know I've only had it for one year, but I have actually, I feel like I might have used this more times than I have used my Birkin 30, which I have had for about three years. So just to give you a sense of like how much I've actually really enjoyed using this piece, and why I feel like I'm at a good place to share an updated review and like wear and tear, all that good stuff. It's not like I've only taken it out like two or three times. I've taken it out a good amount. I've even traveled internationally with this bag. So <laughs> um, it's, it's gotten a lot of action in the past year for sure. I'm gonna set the bag down just so that my arms don't get tired. I have to say my Kelly 25 looks pretty much brand spank new still. Um, I take off the plastic uh, clear protective stickers from all the hardware pretty much as soon as I get the bag. I don't like the risk of it potentially leaving some residue or a mark or like potentially discoloring the metal hardware. So I take those off. And so considering that I took those off pretty much from the start, I feel like this handbag is definitely in really great condition. The main signs of wear that I can see are hairline scratches on the hardware. And they're actually mostly on this clasp area, as you would suspect. The feet actually look really good, in my opinion. I can barely really see any sort of issue down there. And the little rings for the shoulder strap also look really great. So the majority of the scratches are here. I did my best to try to get some close-up footage um, in hopes that it can help share like and and show what kind of scratches they're actually pretty hard to see um, and unless you're really really looking for them they're not very obvious i feel like that's really great considering the clasp gets used every single time to open and close the bag unlike the birkin which i tend to leave open um, this one you i close it all the way this is usually how i carry the bag so the opening the clasp definitely gets a lot more handling so in all seriousness i'm not concerned or even upset about any of those hairline scratches i consider that very normal from my normal use that i have um, and i i would even consider it to be like less than i expected as you can see the structure of the bag is still very strong and sturdy there isn't that much um, kind of sagging or aging that's happening. I fully expected that from the Cellier style and I also think that's a great testament to the Madame leather. I think it's like a sister leather to Epsom but um, and that's why it has this like beautiful sheen to it, has really great structure, is very scratch resistant but has a little bit less of that 
kind of plastic look that Epsom leather can have. I know there are some Hermes aficionados who are not a fan of Epsom leather because it is a stamped leather, because it can have that kind of artificial texture or uh, pattern kind of on it. Um, and so some people don't like that look and feel. I feel like Madame leather is like the sophisticated sister <laughs> of Epsom leather, where it has a lot of that scratch resistant and sturdy characteristics without that kind of, uh, kind of plasticky kind of fake feel so um, the madame leather holds up beautifully in my opinion um, and as you can see even with the whole year um, there's very minimal changes to the structure it pretty much just looks like exactly how it was when i picked it up if you've watched my like updated Birkin wear and tear, I can't quite say the same thing about my Birkin. Just the leather is different. That one's in Clemence's leather. It's a lot softer. It's a lot like more supple feeling. Um, and I think just the nature of that leather is for it to kind of sit, you know, sag a little bit with gravity. So um, compared to that style, this one is definitely holding its shape a lot more. I even got caught in a downpour, like, serious downpour uh, when I was in Paris and I was able to just wipe off the water and it left no marks on the leather everything dried up completely um, I was actually a little bit concerned about the water on the exotic because I hadn't heard about what happens if that you know if that happens um, but thankfully everything dried down just perfectly everything looked fine um, and maybe it's also because it's black but there's like very very minimal if any, signs of wear from that downpour that I got caught in. I love the leather. It's so easy to handle. It's so easy to take care of. Um, like I said, it's very scratch resistant. It's pretty water resistant. Being caught in a downpour, it was okay. Um, and it's very sturdy. So I'm a huge fan of Madame leather. If I'm not mistaken, I think Madame leather is a little bit more expensive than um, than Clemence or Togo. And I think it's still also more expensive than Epsom. So it is a bit more of like a, I guess, premium leather in the scale of leathers that they use. But if you do have the chance to explore a Madame leather handbag, I, I totally, totally recommend it. I feel like it's really built for that everyday wear. The one area on a Kelly style that I think will show signs of wear over time um, is going to be kind of in this back area here because when you open the flap, this is the area that gets the most kind of action. When I open the bag, when I open the flap, basically, I have to, um, Kind of tilt it back so not only does it sort of fold back here but it also um, opens up on the inside so i really feel like and i feel like you can start seeing there's like this little crease here I, like i'm not saying any of this is like it's a bad thing i just mean i expect to see more wear happening over time in this flap area just given the fact that that's how you get in and out of your bag <laughs> and um there's no there's no other kind of relief if that makes sense um every time you have to open it this way so i am mostly not concerned but just aware of this kind of space and i'm trying i'm trying to be really aware of um how i carry it that's why i don't like to carry it open like this if i can help myself because i feel like then the handles have more to like hold on to and there's like less stress that's happening on the flap area uh, but besides that really like in all seriousness this bag looks like practically brand new and i'm in love with it i'm absolutely in love with it if you were to ask me if i recommend a kelly style a kelly 25 in particular i absolutely do i feel like it's really the perfect size handbag to use both as like a daytime bag and something that can transition really well into night not that I necessarily think you're transitioning from day to night in the same day, but it's nice to have a bag where you know it's pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty versatile to carry during the day. And then if you have other more formal occasions that are happening in the evening, you're still able to take them with you. So uh, like I said, I even traveled to Paris with it. Um, I, I brought it with me in my carry-on. It, it traveled really well. It traveled really easily. I think with the kind of 
sturdiness that it has with that extra kind of structure that it has. Um, it worked really well. It was a great piece to have um, while I was traveling because the strap meant I had the option of carrying it on my shoulder if I needed to. And then if I had an evening where I wanted to feel a little more dressed up, then I can just carry it in my hand. I think I said in my like first impressions video that I initially was concerned about the Kelly because I didn't know how I would fuss with the opening and closing. Like I might think it's kind of annoying to get in and out of the bag. Um, and I won't lie, there are those occasional moments where I'm in a little bit more of a rush and I'm like, I have to like open my bag and I get a little flustered about it. Uh, but honestly, nine times out of 10, it's fine. I just take an extra moment to open up my bag. I also have Apple Pay on my phone, so if I'm really that much in a rush, then I can just use my phone as well. I was surprised with how much it didn't bother me. I thought it would bother me a lot more, which is why I thought I would carry, I would continue to carry my Birkin a lot more, um, but I was pretty surprised. I really like how easy it is to pair against like casual outfits, more formal outfits, so all in all, I really like the Kelly style. I wouldn't be opposed to getting another Kelly. <laughs> um, and I find the 25 size with the Cellier stitch is perfect. It's really a great size. I feel like it would work really great on a lot of, uh, a lot of different heights as well as a lot of different body types. It's not too big, it's not too small. Of course, it's also time for me to announce the giveaway winner. Uh, thank you so much for your patience as I was collecting all of the entries and then working through uh, a crazy August and September. So it just took me a little bit longer to organize everything, uh, much longer than I originally intended. I will put the two winners on the screen here. So congratulations. So for the winners, please reach out to me. You can either DM me on Instagram, send me an email, or leave a comment down below. Uh, but that way I can get more of your contact information so I can get your prizes sent out to you. Thank you to everybody who entered and shared video ideas. I've added all of those to my growing list of videos to film for all of you. I'll definitely work my way through those um, and share more of that content you guys want to see. But thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. I still can't believe that I have surpassed that milestone. I really appreciate all of you who've joined this community, all of you who've joined in on the conversations. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So that's an updated wear and tear on my Kelly 25 Touch Cellier. I hope you found this video helpful, but if you have any other specific questions that I may not have answered, feel free to leave them down below or head on over to Instagram and I'd be happy to help however I can. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate all of your feedback and support. If you like this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I post new fashion related videos every Sunday and Wednesday. So until next time,